Welcome to the Women in Leadership Body, Mind, Soul, and Business Podcast. I'm Charlie. And I'm Heather. And together we are working to connect women in leadership and business, empowering each other, improving the health and wellness of our community, body, soul, and mind, connecting to the heart and soul of who we are and what we do. Welcome! Welcome back, ladies. <laughs> Happy to see you guys um, back. Uh, it's it's Friday. We, we love are, a Friday. We love a Friday. Um, we love to interview local women in business for our Friday podcast with you guys. Um, and today we have the amazing and beautiful Rain Love with us for the very first time. She's being super brave and stepping out and um out of your comfort zone because you've never done anything like this before right. and you're talking about what's on your mind but why don't you go ahead and tell us what you do and okay. maybe a quick version of how you got here all right my name like you said is rain love i'm a licensed esthetician here in the great state of washington and i have my business out of my home i have a special studio that's on the side of the house and that's where I have my business. And how did I get here? Oh boy, how do I keep it short and sweet? I'm just gonna give all the credit to my mother. My mother Mm -hmm. passed away and she put me in a position where I could finally do something that I'm really passionate about. Mm -hmm. And so that's the basis of how I got here is her. Awesome. Oh, we love that. Um, one of our ladies is um working um as to celebrate one million women. And one of the things she does is she asks you, like, you say um your name and that I'm the daughter of, and my mm-hmm. story is one of. And I love so I, I, like mm-hmm. it's you, you know, we give credit to where we mm-hmm. came from and what we've learned from mm-hmm. doing that. So we love that. That's <laughs> really cool. Thank you. And so as an esthetician mm-hmm. working out of your home, um, what does that look like for you? What kind of clients are you looking for? Um, clients. I take any age range. The thing is, is people really don't start thinking about it till they're in their Mm thirties and they might see a few crow's feet or something. Oh, Um, that first time you see a wrinkle, you're like, ah, I'm getting old. You're when you're young. You know, you're just like, oh, my skin is fine. I just wash it and put some lotion on it or a little mascara or whatever, I'm fine you know or the opposite is sometimes they put too much on and that can also damage your skin is putting too much makeup on so yeah I feel like that's a conversation we had with like my niece like this is how your auntie did it and you see her face now and this is how your other <laughs> auntie did, you know and this is how you know so we gave her like examples of like someone that put on too much makeup you yeah. know and you know we just mm-hmm. kind of talked about it it was interesting that's interesting I forgot totally about that until you just said that I think taking <laughs> good care of ourselves mm-hmm. um, and that self-care piece is really really important and I know Rain that feels the same way because I understand that what has been on your heart and mind lately is that um, how self-care builds confidence mm-hmm. um, in you mm-hmm. in the different ways and how that bleeds over into every aspect of your life, whether it's relationships, whether it's um, your uh, business, you know, no matter what you're doing, if you are not taking care of yourself, um, it's just not going to be super awesome for you in the long run. And what I like about what Rain wants to talk about today is that we may not have been taught because of other things that happened. So we've talked a lot about generational trauma and the effects of generational trauma as we grow and the effects of this trauma on our families and our business and things. Mm -hmm. So this is today, we're going to talk about a little bit about uh, generational trauma and the effects on our self-care. Mm-hmm. So what you gonna go 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 for it, girl? <laughs> you got this. Take um, it away. <laughs> well, I guess for me, one of the things I've really realized in the last few months, you know, my mother passed away, and then her sister, who was my auntie, 
she passed away right before uh, the holidays last year. Mm -hmm. And um, learning, well, I have a mother's diaries. And believe me, when your mother passes away and you have her diaries, you can put puzzle pieces together. Mm -hmm. And I knew a lot of things about my past, but it all made sense now. You know, what I went through, why I went through it, because they suffered too. They mm -hmm. suffered from their own family, their father. My real grandfather was not a good person, let's just put it that way. Mm -hmm. And then it affected them and their choices, you know. Mm -hmm. And some somebody, uh, you know, I have an aunt, the, one of my aunts that passed. She's very beautiful. You would look at her and be like, oh my God, she's got it all. You know, she married a, a very uh, uh, intelligent man, great, you know, a VP at the company. She's involved with the company. They know people, you know, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, but the thing is, is I know that she struggled with eating disorders and I see it all throughout my aunts, the eating disorder issues. Mm -hmm. So um, the, the gist was if you look pretty and you are dressed well, then everybody thinks everything's fine. And right. it doesn't work like that. It's like a combination of what's going on in the inside. Because if, if this isn't taken care of, this really doesn't mean anything. <laughs> mm -hmm. I mean, you could be a hot mess. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so I learned how much. There's a lot of hot messes in my family. I mean, I love them, but there was has been a lot of hot messes in my family. And when you try to break that intergenerational cycle of... Um, you know, abuse and neglect and different things. Uh, sometimes your family doesn't like it. Uh, they see you, mm. what are you doing? You're going against what we're used to and you're not, uh, you're not feeding it. You know, it's like, you're not pulling the trigger and engaging. Yes. And I got to a point in my life where I don't want to engage anymore. You know, I found out, um, I only found this out from the doctor when I was in the process of getting a divorce. I had suffered a mini stroke. Now my grandma had suffered a lot of strokes um, mm -hmm. and that ended up, she ended up passing away of course from that at an older age. But I just started realizing because of my health issues, it was time to focus on me. Whatever the cost is, if I lose my family, I lose my marriage, whatever I lose, I can't lose me mm -hmm. um, because that's, I was at the edge of a cliff, basically, very much at the edge of a cliff. And I was really blessed to have um, some good friends step in. And then I got involved with a group of people that have been where I've been. And mm -hmm. it just really like propped me up in realizing that I'm worth saving even if I'm the one who's doing 80% of it and I have maybe one or two friends here and there because the way it works is maybe you have one friend you can talk about spirituality. Maybe one friend you can talk about um, the intergenerational trauma um, and even my doctors. I have mostly female doctors and God, I love them. They work together and as kind of like as a team to help me. Awesome. And they're, they just... I mean, to tell, have your doctor say, Rain, you inspire us is like, wow, okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, you're a doctor. I inspire you. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> you know? So yeah, you've got to really ask for what you want. You are worth asking for it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I remember 100%. writing on a piece of paper, what do I want? every day for over a year before uh -huh. I could decide what I wanted but I kept asking until I could figure it out until you had yeah. the words yeah until the it. words could come right of mm -hmm. what I want not what everyone yeah. else wants mm -hmm. yeah that mm -hmm. the healing that you can do for yourself and I think that <clears throat> once you start to heal some of those things for yourself mm -hmm. then it's like how do I do self-care like what what should I be improving on but you know what's going to actually make me feel better mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah and it's different for everybody the process is different for everybody what works for me might not work for you 
-hmm. And that's okay. There shouldn't be any judgment in that. No. You know, as long as we're uplifting each other and, you know, like <laughs> when my aunt passed away last year, oh my God, it hit me hard. Mm -hmm. I didn't realize how hard it hit me. And then my friend, she let me know, Reagan, I'm concerned, you know, mm -hmm. and I was like, you're right. Um, so I went back to the doctor and we talked about my depression because it, it kicked in again for a while. Mm -hmm. And so I needed some help dealing with that. But sometimes things happen and you've got to reach out for help. And so, yeah, that's, you know, all that's been so life-changing over the last few years. I'm just really lucky to be alive and to be sitting here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> there was a time when I was like, why, you know, can I just pass away and go be with my parents? <laughs> you know, <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. And obviously there's a reason why. I'm here. You're yeah. definitely a beautiful, safe place for someone to learn how to do better self-care. Mm -hmm. You really create that safety for us women that have been traumatized. Like that is definitely your niche. Mm -hmm. um, you also provide a safe place for women that um, don't like to um, take their shawls off. I'm trying to find the right ways to say it, um, you know, in front of other people, they yeah. don't want to show other people some of the things that are underneath. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I could see someone coming to you that was really sensitive about like some facial scarring mm -hmm. or something where they feel really shy about sharing mm -hmm. that they want to even share, you know, do something about it because yeah. you're very kind and um understanding every, and understanding and and like the aesthetic of your room like everything is like geared towards privacy and mm -hmm. calm and safety and mm -hmm. I, th I think that's really a gift that you can give especially women mm -hmm. thank you Heather <laughs> I appreciate that I really do and another way that rain likes to just give people a safe place is uh, something that we found out about rain when in conversation with her is she gives rides to um kids to school who mm -hmm. might not otherwise have a safe ride to school yeah um mm -hmm. kids who have been in like foster programs or um, just different programs of different sorts. Do you want to talk about that for a minute? Wow. <laughs> you know, that's a really deep, I didn't realize how deep it would be to take on this, you know, mm -hmm. to do mm -hmm. this. Mm -hmm. But when kids feel safe in your car, they will tell you things mm -hmm. that they are not telling anybody else. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you. <laughs> mm -hmm. And you kind of get in a moment of Zen, okay, higher power, what should I say? <laughs> <You know? laughs> Give me the I right know? words to say to this young soul that needs it yeah. right this moment. Uh -huh. Yes. Because uh, they want to feel safe too. A lot mm -hmm. of them have been through trauma. I mean, I had a child share with me how they have parents that are addicts and they are currently with their grandparents. Mm -hmm. And they have kept having nightmares that their grandparents pass away. Somebody takes mm -hmm. them away from them. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know. And that's a real, real that, fear for some kids too. Like, mm -hmm. Yeah. When you're elementary school age too, at least if yeah. you're 16 or 17, you kind of feel like you're almost at the end. You know, you got this. <laughs> Cause I've given kit rides to those kids too. <laughs> right. <laughs> like, I'm about to get my license, you know, my uncle helping me. Yeah. But when they're elementary school, the perception is like, oh my gosh, you know, am I going to be safe? Mm -hmm. And even if it's for a few minutes, I want them to know that they're safe in my car, you know, with me going on a ride to school. Uh, That's very school. impactful. Mm -hmm to provide that safety in such a chaotic world because even just being homeless for myself and my son just like him knowing that he was going to be 
you know, not, I, he didn't ride with you, but knowing that he had a safe ride to school and he could go to the same school instead of having to keep moving around while we figured our cred out, right? Like, just like having that consistency and knowing that there was a someplace safe. I mean, that's huge mm -hmm. in the world. Like, you are impacting their ability to change their generational trauma for their families moving forward you know i maybe when i die i'll, I'll get a you know a brief synopsis of what i do <laughs> sometimes well, i feel like that's why i can relate so much to george and it's a wonderful life like, i want to do this i want to do that you know it's like well, no, this is what you're going to do instead. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think back to my own crazy life, like, uh, cause my, my growing up wasn't very awesome either. And I ended up living with my grandparents and I want to say it was that bus driver who was awesome. She would pick me up early because I would always go to the bus stop early and she'd pick me up and, it, you know, and then she always talked to me and she was a prolific reader. Mm -hmm. Like she almost every day was reading a different book while she drove us, you know, waiting on the bus. She always had, so it was really, it was neat to see that there was a different way. And I think she helped open my mind to, Hey, it doesn't have to be you know, not every person's going to be like my mom was growing up, right? Like mm -hmm. it really helped me to look for a different way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You have choices. Mm -hmm. Right. It opens up those choices. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And we all have, when we think about it, other adults from our past that we looked up to that were part of our lives, even just a small part of our lives that changed it completely, completely forever and for the better. And you are mm -hmm. providing, oh, I'm going to cry. <laughs> oh, thank you. That's sweet. I'm touched. I'm really touched, Charlie. You're providing that for other people. And not because you have to, not because you feel obligated. And, mm -hmm. but because you have experienced just a, you know, maybe even just a tiny bit of, of the same kind of pain that they feel and you can relate to them and you want to be able to give back because that's who you are. So I went to 13 different schools growing up. I had, even though the first five years of my life, I was with both of my parents I was also raised by aunties and grandmas and a neighbor and whoever uh -huh. <laughs> and just kind of feeling like you know and sometimes when you're the drop-off kid other ones are like why is she here you know she mm -hmm. doesn't belong here and you kind of feel like okay where do I belong so I know what that feels like and mm -hmm. I just wanted to touch back to for a moment when you were talking about women who um are, may, might be afraid to you know show something you know in a other setting versus my setting I have scars all over my body <laughs> I mean <laughs> they they basically had to gut me like a fish to save my life so I have this like long scar you know and then I had another surgery to have half my colon removed you know, and so I know what that feels like, like, I'm going to hide this, I don't know if I want you to see it, and I'm not just going to share it with anybody, you know, I'm not going to share my story just with anybody, well, of course, now I'm doing this, but, <laughs> <laughs> but you kind of get to the point where you figure, okay, there must be a reason, I mean, I was the Oprah woman, I was the woman who was like, kids, be quiet, mommy's watching Oprah, <laughs> 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 Oprah. <Oprah's I> <laughs> yeah because it was all about growth and and looking internally at, at things and I realize now how after all these decades how all that stuff has brought me where I am today mm -hmm. here talking with you wonderful ladies you know mm -hmm. and the fact that you can share your feelings on such an intimate level 
is powerful and women need to trust other women. Absolutely. I encountered in school even some bullying and I was kind of shocked that grown women still bully, but they do. And so I really sit back and kind of watch people <laughs> and believe me, I'm social media savvy too. <laughs> you are. <laughs> You're like, I'm stalking people. <laughs> Not everybody is who they say they are. <laughs> right. And right. So I, I think that's. <laughs> That's important too, because a lot of people aren't as authentic as they should be online, right? Mm -hmm. And, or they, you know, when it's really hard, like, mm -hmm. are we actually sharing that it's hard? Mm -hmm. Like, are we sharing the hard stuff? Or are we only sharing you our pretty makeup and, you know, that we made yeah. it through the day? Like, is it just mm -hmm. that Instagram perfect or, you yeah. know, what's really going on? Right. And <laughs> life is messy and we're pretty authentic around here <laughs> I have, I've been told like oh my gosh it's like you're the same person I'm like well I'm just trying to be me <laughs> like that's all <laughs> to be something else. Yeah. that's that's a lot of work I don't want to do that super over it. I also am, I have try to drop the com comparison right yeah we all have our own journey and mm -hmm. our paths may become parallel and we might feel like we're on the same path, but it's still our own journey. Mm -hmm. And it's nice to have people that can support you on your path yeah. without, without it derailing them too, you know, like this is mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. uplifting, empowering. Mm -hmm. um, I love what you do because you do face pets. <laughs> so, I love face pets. I, love, I was surprised when I got my first facial and I was like I don't know why I haven't been doing this my whole life I love to have someone else do my makeup and uh -huh. have my face pets like you mm -hmm. know when you it's realize you're not touch. being touched right and then somebody else does your your makeup or they you, know, you get a facial done and you're like yeah. I had some physical contact in a very safe way yeah mm -hmm. and that it's priceless to me yeah. like that safe touch mm -hmm. without exactly. any I, yeah. touch yeah. equals trust yeah. to me touch and trust go together right. and, and if you get a vibe from somebody that it ain't right it ain't right. <laughs> trust hundred percent. Trust your trust intuition. That. You don't have to explain it. No, like, you don't. Yeah. No, you mm -hmm. know, and you know, it's okay to say no and walk away. Mm -hmm. Be like, mm, no. <laughs> um, but Rain, I just love how you just love people. You know, no matter whether you're giving them a facial, a ride to school in a conversation, you just love people where they're I at know. and mm -hmm. for who they are. Mm -hmm. No judgments. And that is amazing. I'm honored that you say that. I really am. And I'm going to share a truth with you now. I changed my last name to love and it came about with a conversation with a girlfriend mm -hmm. um, going through my divorce we used to go on long walks together because she moved down to, she's in Vegas right now. She moved to Vegas. Mm -hmm. But I'm like, girl, I don't want my last name to belong to anybody else. I mm -hmm. want it to be something different. And we're walking. And she's like, love, you are love. And I'm like, oh my God, you're right. Love. <laughs> so Aww. I have the attorney change everything. <laughs> And so nothing from my prior marriage or even childhood is connected to my last name. It's just how I define myself because I don't believe there's enough of it in the world. And if the, people think that that's love, it's not. They haven't learned like you were talking about mm -hmm. uh, a little bit, Charlie. No, no is a complete answer. Mm -hmm. And no might be for my own safety and my own sanity. And that is okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's beautiful. Oh, no is allowed to be for your own self. 
-hmm. you don't have to qualify that for anything right and as we've talked about before if um it's it's okay to disappoint someone else it's never okay to disappoint yourself yeah don't do that to yourself no guilting and shaming yourself Mm -hmm. and if you need help with that we got lots of people in our in our network that do specific work we have a gal that works specifically with shame we have a gal that works with forgiveness. Mm-hmm. We have oh. some really amazing ladies in our group. Awesome. So if anybody needs some help, you feel free to drop a message to any of us. We'll be happy to help. I know you, I'm going to, of course, end up meeting more people. I know. <laughs> yes. Happen, you know? Yeah. So I'm looking forward to that. Yay. Know, Rain, thank you so much for joining us today and sharing your your heart and soul with um, us and our community. And I'm glad you became part of our community with us. And Oh, thank uh, you. Uh, One more thing good. before. Oh, so sorry. Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. I just, I want to drop a resource. Um, I feel like we've talked about a little bit about depression and generational trauma. And I want to mm-hmm. point out that Washington state has a new 988 number for Mm -hmm. mental health crisis moments. So if you're experiencing and you need some help, any time of day, 24 hours, 988. 988. Not 911, 988. 988. Super close, super Mm -hmm. close. But that's just been within the last like month. It's yeah, it's really new. And I'm Mm -hmm. seeing it places and I'm really excited to see that they're trying to help us better with our mental health. Mental health is, it's becoming less of a stigma, right? Yeah. Yeah. So Mm -hmm. we're understanding that, you know, if we take care of our mental health, that we're not going to have this bad of a time, right? Mm -hmm. If we learn these things, we learn our self-care so we have better confidence. (laughs) Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right? Yes. <laughs> Eerie, Eerie agree. Even Eerie agree. <laughs> so again, sorry, Rain, I did not mean to interrupt you. Thank you so much for being here with us today. Oh, thank you. It's been an honor and a privilege to talk to you ladies and for you to share your hearts as well to trust me with that. Thank you. Um, next up, we have Sue and Greta talking about our cause of the quarter, the um, AT for PD, Appalachian Trail for Parkinson's Disease. Sue just turned 66 years old, and she will be uh, one of less than 50 women over the age of 50 to finish the Appalachian Trail. We are so proud of her and her daughter, Greta. They're doing amazing. They face some really amazing challenges but their message is coming up so close to being done and I can't wait to have them back on the podcast when they get home (laughs) and they've had a chance to take a shower and and hug the dad and and the husband and kiss the dog right (laughs) (laughs) I'm sure they miss all of those things so check out their message next thank Thank you you. namaste So we are uh, Sue and Greta, or our trail names are Lilo and Stitch, and we are hiking the whole Appalachian Trail from Maine to Georgia, so 2,194.3 miles, (laughs) and uh, we're doing it to raise $50,000 or more (laughs) um, for Parkinson's disease research. Yeah, through the through the Michael J. Fox Foundation, and we are doing it all in honor of my dad, her husband, who was diagnosed with Parkinson's disease back in 2010. So, and we all know so many people who are diagnosed with Parkinson's disease, and we are trying to do our small part in the world of Parkinson's disease to find a cure. Thank you for joining us today on the Women in Leadership Body, Soul, Mind, and Business podcast. Please download the podcast on your favorite podcast player. We love you and we will see you next time. Namaste.